I think the internet like just makes two ways of separating your plugins, either virtual instruments and effects or something like stock plugins that are those that are included with the installation of your software. In the case of Reaper, I do consider Reapack stock. But here's a way of organizing and knowing better what you really have, what tools you have within your disposal. The concept, again, is what matters. It doesn't matter if you're on Reaper. Your DAW probably has a way to organize your plugins and we will take advantage of that. Of course, with some extra bonuses for those Reaper users. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and let's talk about how to take advantage more and better of your plugins. So probably, eventually, uh, you will end up with a plugin list that looks more or less like this. And that's a lot. First of all, because you have AU plugins, you have VSTs, you have VST2, VST3, and if you're installing all of them, you are just getting a ton of copies of the same plugins and whatever amount of plugins that you might have, 100 or 200 times three, times four is going to be a ton of plugins that do take also some space within your hard drive. And if that's something that worries you, you should only be using a couple of formats. In my case, I only use Clap, AU, and VST3. I will make a video on that because there are certain benefits for each. But let's zoom in into the FX window in Reaper. So one thing that I really like here is that you can just right click the FX browser and add a folder and those will be right here. Even though Reaper is organizing them by developer categories, FX chains, in the case, those that you have already made, I have made a couple of videos with how to make a Leslie Rotary and other videos. And other videos that I have showcased a couple of those. First of all, I want to run you through how I organize my, my plugins. Essentially, I could think about plugins that help me get sounds out of virtual instruments or recorded instruments. And those in my head are, of course, EQs, filters, saturations, effects whatsoever. There's a problem with how to build up your way of categorizing them. In my head, it's clearer if I only use a section, for example, called filters, where I have every single EQ that I really use. And once I get really used to that list, I can just start uninstalling the others that I haven't used in weeks or in months. Any dynamic processor will be in a category that will be called something like dynamics. In this case, this version of this version is still as Mix 101 dynamics. But as you can see, I have limiters, I have compressors, I have gates, I have expanders, and some of them might have some double purpose. For example, dials is a nasty saturation compressor kind of plugin. So <clears throat> the benefit of having these folders is that I can have dials here and dials in my color folder where I can also find it. In my case, naming it color means saturation. I do separate saturation from distortion, but that's a whole other topic. But whatever I'm looking at in my folder that's called color, it's plugins that will change the tone or even the timbre of whatever I'm running through them in different amounts. This is just like all of them, right? Creative tools might be a couple of plugins or a couple of tools that I think that always take me to some new places whenever I'm running in circles or I'm feeling kind of stuck. I have these hidden gems that I'm building with the JS plugins that I've been looking into and I will eventually make a video on it. I have a list of the instruments that I've been using the most. For example, UV or some Arturia stuff. So I can really go into it fast without having to look or type for the name of the plugins. I also have a small, a way too big list by now of what I can use on mastering since it's one of my main gigs. And as you can see, most of them comply with the dynamics or the color category. But those are the plugins that I usually use when I'm trying to do a master. If I need to do some metering, I have my folder that's called metering where I have span. And I have a whole video on span that's really interesting on how to take advantage of it for a new way of trying to think about frequencies. Uh, I will link it in the description if you want to go check it out. I have my delay set on the side. I have my reverb set on the side. Instead of having one 
giant FX, you know. Uh, I have another FX section because this one might be some combined or, or multi-FX kind of plugins. For example, the H9000 that I also made a video when they updated to the MK2 and you can watch it in the description. But many of these are actually some multi-FX kind of plugins where I even have modulation plugins that are more time-based. Some modulation plugins like Phasers, like Chorus, Flangers, Shaperbox, that's just a fantastic plugin. And I have even <laughs> saved a couple of utility plugins that I call them. Those utility plugins usually work with some transparent gain staging kind of thing, some monitoring issues. So if I was going to make a new folder, for example, utility, I would just look, for example, for isolate. That's a fantastic plugin for, for you to be able to change and listen to different parts of the spectrum. You even have a dim. You can listen to left side, right side, mid or side, completely free by TV Pro Audio. I would also just drag and drop something like Decibel because this is actually a metering plugin that I would really use because I only use two versions of it with a spectrogram vertical, a spectrogram horizontal, if I need to see more over time or the default where I have different meters at hand. I have the goniometer, the VU meters, the spectrogram, the frequency analyzer, and a stereo analyzer per frequency. This is really useful, especially when dealing with microphones. Even though you don't think it could be, I would consider my Reacom a utility plugin because I often use it in the, uh, as my default sidechain whenever I'm trying to sidechain something. And some fun facts for those Reaper users, is that you can right click and change the default settings with which that plugin would load instead of having to do more clicks. So here you can add it with a preset, for example, my default sidechain that's set as the default load preset, or you can use any other. And a couple of other stuff that I have showcased on other videos is that remember that you can load it and have that visual interface in the mixer control panel or the track control panel. So if I load it like this, you will see that the plugin showcase the threshold down here and I can just move it and adjust it even with the plugin closed. And if I send it to the track control panel, I have my threshold right here so I can adjust it. And I have a visual reference of the gain reduction right here. You can change the default preset from here or from the plugin itself, just clicking on plus and save preset as default. Many of my plugins on my FX browser already say here on default preset JC default because that's my own preset where I like to start with. And you can also add a shortcut to load it. This has been showcased in my videos as well and many others where you can just set up a command, a keyboard combination to load that specific plugin. If you are not using too many plugins or if you find yourself using five plugins way too often, like just assign a shortcut to them and use that instead of having to open the FX browser, type the name and then load it. One other thing that could be useful for a couple of you is that for the default settings or for new instances, some plugins respond to keyboards in the plugin. For example, keystrokes like the up and down keys, some of them like the search can be resized using only the keyboard and Remember that if the commands are not being responded to from your keyboard, you might not have selected. So the attention of the keyboard is not right here in the plugin itself. If I press at the bottom of Reaper and then hit that shortcut, then search won't change the size, zoom in or zoom out. But if I last click my search window in the interface and I do my command, as you can see, it will change the zoom size. This also works for the arrow keys. This is very important because some parts of the plugin, as you can see right here in my pink circle, whenever I hit the up and down keys, it will change and go through different parts of the plugin. For example, if I'm using an LFO and I want to assign it somewhere and I hit tab, it's going to open immediately into the whole uh, assignable assignable layout or visualization of the plugin. And many of these plugins have that kind of shortcuts. If you're not sure, check the user guide of your plugins. Like I can't suggest that enough.
For example, search, if, if you right click on the back of the plugin, not a specific square where you can change the filters or, or something, and then go into workflow, you can look for the use keyboard shortcuts or edit keyboard shortcuts. And from there, you can actually see all of the things that you could control from the keyboard itself. And this will make you super fast in many plugins. Again, if you're using a couple of plugins, you probably don't need a hundred different plugins on a regular basis. And before the round down and checking if everything is clear, if you right click in this great area where the FX default preset and shortcut titles are at, you can go into the FX plugins if you're having some problems and, and like just tweak that a little bit. You can rescan for new plugins if you have installed something while Reaper is open. I don't think this makes sense for many people, but you can change the folder section to be vertical, uh, but I like the, ver the horizontal pane configuration that for some reason is just named vertical pane configuration. You can change how many things you can see in the columns. You can change what kind of plugins you are actually seeing, but this feature specifically, I find it very useful. Duplicate plugins in of different types. I'm not using it. I'm, I have the show all duplicates because as I said, in some plugins, I rather use the AU and in some plugins, I rather use the VST3. So if I'm only filtering everything into AU, I wouldn't be able to reach the VST3 for some plugins. So in my case, this is not useful, but if you're only taking advantage of AUs or VST3s, like just rush that and you will have a much shorter plugin list. So let's run again through what are the ways you could think of your plugins. You could have a folder where you have something that's closer to some sort of template, where you have a couple of virtual instruments, a couple of channel strips, a couple of effects that you often use. For example, I have also shown a couple of times plugins, a lot of plugins by Tukan. <clears throat> so be sure to check those out. Like those could live rent free on most of your session. You could make a new category, a new folder for those plugins that you just ran into and haven't had time to really dig deep in. You might have, I honestly recommend to call them just like EQs or filters for anything that's doing EQ or filtering of any kind. If you have a, dy a dynamic EQ, then that would be in the dynamics and in the EQ filtering folders. For dynamics, you would do probably something like compressors, limiters, expanders, gates, like any kind of dynamic processing. For anything that's really adding saturation as a main purpose, like just add it in a different folder. For anything that's just an FX combined plugin that's complex, add that specifically in another folder that's called FX or funky stuff or whatever. For the, for the individual effects plugins that could do other things but are mainly one thing, I do suggest that you have them separate. So for example, I have the delays and the reverbs on the side and I have the field, the FX that are complex overall in a different thing. You might want to have instruments that for example, in this case, you could go into instruments for certain styles if you're producing different styles or <clears throat> like just drop everything inside it. For utility plugins, you could drag something like your drum replacers, something like gain structuring plugins, something like LFOs, uh, stuff that help you like just get things done but aren't affecting the sound. They are mere utility. For example, you could have loaded the mid and side decoder and encoder within Reaper and just have them always at hand inside of your, of your utility folder. For mastering, if you're doing mastering, like make a really, really short list of what things you are actually using on mastering and so on. I think the idea is pretty clear. Just invest a little bit of time in doing this. I promise this will save you so much time in the future. I can't stress this enough. Nothing should be stopping you in the middle of a session to figure out where something is where you can find it, or what else do you have at hand. The better you know your tools and the better you know your libraries, the faster you will be at just dropping ideas or helping others bounce ideas or print ideas or lay them down in your DAW. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and go any of the 
If you like these kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and do all of those things that people on YouTube say. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.